Welcome to part one of our negotiation book. And today we're going to be looking at the basics, just beginning up what is negotiation. So let's go ahead and hit our vocabulary for this part, part number one. These are, of course, all key vocabulary words related to the basic ideas introduced in this chapter. And so let's begin with some of these. Agreement. Of course, agreement meaning to come to an agreement to agree on something, especially between the two parties that are involved in the negotiation. Argument. Argument, of course, is when you argue with someone. Here, it, we're using it as a noun. Uh, they are having an argument. And it's important to remember that an argument is not the same as a negotiation. Although we often do get those confused, they should not be at all the same. At least. This is often used in negotiation, and especially when you're trying to make a point that at least, I must get something at least, the minimum I need to get, or the minimum I need to give. So it can be either way, at least. Bottom line is related to this idea of at least. A bottom line being, you cannot go below this. So usually bottom line is used with an offer, and usually the price is involved somehow. So if you say, my bottom line is $10, it means I cannot go further below $10. It also could be the opposite direction if you're a seller or a buyer, depending on the situation bottom line. It can also be used for the whole package. This is the last offer I can make. It's my bottom line. This quality, this quantity, and this price all together is my bottom line. That's possible. Usually it's used just with price though. Compromise. Compromise means you give something up in order to get something. Or you give something up now in order to maybe have a good relationship for later. Usually we can use this between two or more parties and all sides compromise. If one side compromises and the other side does not compromise, that's not so much a compromise as giving up or just surrendering. But even then we usually think, well, I'll compromise now because I'll get something later. I'll give something up now so that I can have a good relationship with the other side later. Count on. Count on is a way in English just to say, I'm sure this is going to happen. And usually we use this to emphasize that you can trust me. You can count on me. Uh, you can count on this being the best offer. You can count on our quality. So this is really important when you're beginning your negotiation, when you're talking with the other side, to kind of give them a feeling that they can count on you. Disagreement. Of course, a disagreement is something that we have when we have an argument, but it's also something we have when we have different opinions about a negotiation position. So a disagreement is just the difference between the two groups. Those differences may be very objective, like money, or they may be very subjective, like feelings. Flexible. Of course, when we have a negotiation, we often think about being flexible. And flexible here means that you can change your position. And often we use this word in negotiation to ask the other side to please be flexible. Could you please be more flexible? We often use it that way. Now, I'm being very flexible. Why don't you be flexible? Meaning you can change your position. Goal, of course, goal meaning what is it you want to get out of the negotiation. This is very, very important for us to understand in our negotiation class. And we set a goal, that is, what is it we want to get? What is the main thing we want? Of course, you can have many goals, or just one goal. In the middle. In the middle. Now, in the middle is a little bit like this idea of giving something up or compromising. In the middle means, can we split something so that we do the deal, but it's in the middle. Uh, you want $5, I want $10. Can we do something like 750? Can we go in the middle? So in the middle meaning, can we split the difference between us? Inflexible. 
inflexible meaning no flexibility. Now, inflexible, like the word flexible, it's the opposite, right? In this case, we're saying someone is inflexible. And usually you would not say this about yourself, you would say this about the other side. You are being inflexible. You are being inflexible, meaning you're not flexible, you're not giving up anything in this negotiation. So usually this word is a way to show that the other side is not being helpful or not changing. Issue. Now when we talk about issue, what we're talking about are the different points in negotiation. And we're going to call those issues. So each issue is one part of the negotiation that may be related to the goal we have. So it may be price, it may be quantity, it may be shipping. It could be many things like that. But each one of the issues is something we need to think about carefully. So issue are the kind of topics or the points. I want to raise three issues in this negotiation. There are three issues that I do not agree with. That's the way you use that. Let's look at some more here, a nice little phrase. Make everyone happy. Make everyone happy. Now, of course, we often hear about this when we think about this idea of win-win, make everyone happy. So in negotiation, of course, we often use this when we're speaking because it encourages the other side to believe that we're trying to be cooperative. I just want to make everyone happy. I just want to make everyone happy. I want to compromise, so maybe you can compromise too. That's the way you use that phrase. Of course, it's a very positive phrase. Now, is it true? It may not be true. You may say it, but it's not really true that you're compromising, but it is often used to give this idea that I'm trying to give something up, so you should give up something also. Negotiation, of course, is the act of negotiating, or in this case, we just very basic. Negotiation is a way to come to an agreement so that we can agree that are all sides going to be happy? Does it make everyone happy? Maybe, maybe not. That's totally a different question. But a negotiation means that you have two sides that have differences that they cannot agree on, therefore they must go and negotiate, and the thing, that thing is called a negotiation. A solution, so here another noun. A solution meaning we find an answer to the problem. Of course, here the problem is the difference between the two sides, and we're going to solve that difference by coming up with a negotiation, and then the negotiation will conclude. Maybe it'll make everyone happy, maybe not, but it's a solution, a way to solve the problem. We can solve the problem by changing prices, changing shipping, changing quantity, or maybe sometimes we just solve the problem in a totally different way, such as saying, well, I'll agree with you this time, but next time I hope you'll give me better consideration or give me something special. Strategy. Okay, so strategy is often um, easy to get confused with another word called tactics. Strategy is kind of your overall plan. It's your big plan, the big idea, the big thing you're going to follow. Now the thing with the strategy in negotiation is that we do need to have strategies. But because strategies are kind of a big plan, an overall plan of how to do something, but a negotiation has many small points, right? You talk to someone, you're talking about price, you're talking about quantity, you're talking about quality. At any one time those things can change. Therefore, you need to step back and think, does my strategy need to change or can it stay the same? So strategy is not super specific. It's more of an overall plan without the details, whereas tactics are much more the details, which we'll learn about later. The next phrase is often used. This is really a common phrase that many people like to use, and that is to be honest. So when you're speaking in a negotiation, you can say, well, to be honest, this is our best quality. And it's a way to emphasize that I cannot give you any more. It's already my bottom line. To be honest, that's all I can give you. To be honest, our price is higher than the others, but our quality is better. So you can use to be honest in many ways like this, but it's a way to help the other side feel comfortable. It's a way for you to encourage the other side to trust you. Now, does that mean you really have to be honest? Well. Of course not. It doesn't mean you're really being honest. And often if you hear the other side saying, to be honest, maybe you should maybe not trust them so much. 